In this video, we're going to be designing a filtration schedule for a 14 by 28 foot swimming pool with a variable speed swimming pool pump. Now the average depth of this pool is about 4.5 feet, and so it's 13,000 gallons or just a little bit over. So that means our filtration goal for this pool is 39,690 gallons, which is to say three times the volume of the swimming pool because that's the point at which we have achieved 95% of all of the water in the pool being filtered at least one time. And we need this because anything that we don't filter from the water, then the chemicals and the chlorine needs to deal with. And that's something that all swimming pool owners want. Less exposure to chemicals, less exposure to chlorine. One of the ways that you accomplish that is by filtering your water properly. Well, what does properly means? mean? It means that you filter your water at least three times the volume of your pool every single day. And so that's why our goal here is 39,690 gallons of water that we're going to try to filter over a 24 hour period. Now, with a variable speed swimming pool pump, it's not like it used to be with sw single speed pumps where you, I run my pump eight hours a day or I run my pump 12 hours a day. It used to be that's how you save money, but not with a variable speed pump. With a variable speed pump, you want it running 24 hours per day. Specifically, what you want is long periods of time at lower speeds. That's where your savings will happen and that's what I'll be able to show you here. But the system that we're gonna be looking at here is for a 14 by 28 foot pool, which is a little bit on the smaller side. And so it's got a relatively low resistance to flow being that it's designed with two inch pipes and we're using a one and a half horsepower pump here. So I'll just show you the system. One and a half horsepower variable speed pump, 150 square foot cartridge filter. And we're going to be monitoring through this two inch pipe and this digital flow meter here. And that's what we're reading over here. The power is 120 volts to the pump. We'll be monitoring through this external wattage meter as well as the secondary wattage and amperage meter. So as I was saying, you want long hours at low speeds. Well, what is low speeds? What is a good RPM for low speed? That is a dynamic question and the answer is different for every single swimming pool and that's the reality of the situation but like let's look at some real world situations here 750 rpm on this system which again has a tdh of about 25 feet is resulting in 22 gallons per minute 750 rpm is extremely low but 22 gallons per minute is actually a pretty appreciable number, especially when you look at the fact that it costs less in terms of power consumption, that is, less than a 100 watt light bulb. And that's what we're reading here, 96 watts, just a bit over. And same on here, 95 and change. So 22 gallons per minute for under 100 watts of power consumption is pretty amazing. And so that's why you're going to have long periods of time where you're getting 22 gallons per minute, but it's only 96 watts worth of power. But swimming pools need more of a dynamic filtration schedule than just one speed around the clock, especially if that's a low speed. You need periods of time, typically speaking, at medium speeds and periods of time at higher speeds and you need these for the peripheral items in your pool like saltwater chlorinators and heaters to function as well as just basic f functioning of things like your skimmer you need a certain volume of flow through your pool filtration system for your pool to vortex and for the skimmer to work and that's why we need a few hours here at higher rpms even though what you're going to see is 18 hours at low speeds will cost a very small amount of money. Even two hours at high speed is gonna cost you a lot more than probably 18 hours at low speed. Let's take a look here. So I've got the mid speed set up for 1400 RPM, which should get us about 36 gallons per minute and consume about 235 watts of power. So let's take a look here. So 1400 RPM. should be about 36 35 showing right now sometimes it'll flip back and forth a little bit 
check back with that in a sec. 235, 234 watts power consumption. Still. All right, so now let's take a look at the high speed operation. 2500 RPM. Why is it 2500 RPM and not 3000 or 3450 RPM? Well, 3450 would be the maximum RPM if this pump was installed with 240 volts, but it's not. It's installed with 120 volts, and as a result, 3000 RPM is the maximum. But then, why not 3000? And the answer is, is that backing off the throttle ever so slightly, so to speak, actually has a pretty significant increase on the system efficiency. What you'd not notice is that the difference between 2500 RPM and 3000 RPM, or maximum speed, in terms of flow rate, is probably not very much at all. A couple of gallons per minute. But the power consumption is a big difference and so that's why you back off the throttle just a little bit so to speak so my highest speed is not actually the highest speed that the system can operate but a fairly significantly high rpm that results in a you know pretty high gallons per minute flow so we'll take a look here at that 2500 2500 RPM here. We were barely 3 PSI on the gauge here. Seventy one gallons per minute. Under a thousand watts. Over nine fifty by a little bit. Nine sixty here. But there is some variance in that 950, as you saw. So let's talk about these numbers just a little bit. So first of all, the flow. 22 gallons per minute times 60 minutes in an hour times 18 hours a day for the low speed operation. 23,760 gallons just from lo the low speed operation. 36 gallons per minute times 60 minutes times 4 hours, 8640. And 71 gallons a minute times 60 minutes times 2 hours is just over 8,500. So the grand total here, 40,920 gallons. Our goal was 39,000, so we overshot by just a small amount, and that's just fine. 40,920 gallons. Now let's take a look at the cost for doing that because that's really the point of all this. 18 hours at 96 watts because again it's so little. 1,728 watts. 235 watts times 4 hours, 940 watts. And 950 watts times 2 hours, 1,900. For a total of 4,568 watts or 4.57 kilowatts when you round up and why is that significant and that, that's because you pay by the kilowatt hour for your power specifically speaking 13 cents per kilowatt hour so 4.57 kilowatts times 13 cents per kilowatt hour is 59 cents per day to maintain this pool with a proper filtration of 40,000 gallons of filtered water per day that's approximately 1770 per month it's pretty affordable and you have the benefit of knowing that you're doing it properly. Let's take a look at some of the interesting things here. Remember I was saying about that low speed operation, 23,000 gallons from the low speed versus eight and eight from the other two. But look at the power consumption here. So at two hours at higher speed, not even maximum, but higher speed, you used 1900 watts of power, 18 hours, at the lower speed only use 1728 so you use more power in two hours than 18 hours you use more power for 8520 gallons than you do 23760 that's how variable speed pumps work that's how you save money with them don't turn them off part of the day run them for long hours at low rpm but remember that these are just example rpms 
every swimming pool system is different so you need to design yours to meet the total dynamic head of your system the type of uh, pump that you have the size of pipes you have but ultimately this is what it should look like in essence is periods of low speed medium speeds and higher speeds every day if you found this information helpful please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel and you can check out my website swimmingpoolsteve.com